or welcome back to another of a new video. In today's video, we'll be showing you a even better build quality of the previous simple FM transmitter circuit. The previous one shares a common ground plane, but due to the construction of the circuitry itself, it suffers a bit of self-oscillation and produces quite a lot of harmonics. In today's, this construction here I've shown I found from one of the internet's downloads, they give you a PCB layout once you follow it correctly. Basically, it produces quite a clean signal with less harmonic variations, but it still produces am amplitude modulations and from the output, as well as there are some harmonics. So here I can see I've got three resistors in parallel, which is three 150 ohm resistors. This 150 ohm resistors add up in total to give us a 50 ohm load, which is 50 ohm in impedance, and uh, plus a little light bulb here. The bulb is a really high resistance bulb, so therefore it doesn't really affect the overall network impedance. But this bulb just gives you a like a indication of the amount of RF being produced. Because we're driven it in low voltage, so therefore this bulb doesn't really glow unless I'm driving it with a tune four four two seven. In this case, the bulb will light up. But here I right now use a tune three eight six six, so the transistor is driven is much lightly loaded and doesn't produce as much as heat as possibly possibly being produced. If I want to produce the maximum power, here I can get like three watts out by driven it at twenty eight volts. But in this demonstration, we've just been showing you this circuit in general. Here we used a ceramic trimmer. Ceramic trimmer also offers an excellent stability, as well as this audio frequency being passed through a decoupling capacitors. And here's the overall general circuit layout. For the transistor oscillator itself, it's so versatile as long as any small power signal transistor can be used for this oscillator portion of the circuitries, but for amplifiers, you might want to use something more specialized. So if you've driven the circuits hard enough, actually the three resistor will start to heat up. But because the three resistor is the dummy load itself, it doesn't really radiate any RF powers. As well as you can see the construction of the three resistors is in a ladder line constructions so therefore if any rf being emitted by one of the leads they will automatically get cancelled out by the other lead so which is from the famous rf ladder line the transmission line which is called a balanced line whereas for a coaxial cable it has much greater shielding but unfortunately it's not balanced so for some situation you might also want to use a balloon which is, it goes from balanced to unbalanced for the network here we can get ourselves a radio to test it. So if you tune it, because I have to get this quite close to the radio because it doesn't really emit much RF at all. You can hear the pops because it's one of the harmonics. And you can tune the network. Now the circuit is matched well. If we open the sound a little bit more and you bang on the board, you can hear the banging sound is being amplified by the coils to the speaker. So when you bang in the board itself, it causes vibration. This vibration causes the air core coil to constrict and relax, thus changing the overall length of the coil. Changing the length of any air core coil will also effectively affect its overall inductance. If the inductance changed in a LC network, then the frequency will also change. The closer the coils are together, so less the L, the length for the inductor, the higher the inductance will be, thus the lower the frequency will be, and for vice versa. So because I'm not driving it hard at all, so it's been driven really lightly, so I don't even to bother with the matching network at all. And that's it, hope you like it. I shall see you in another of a new video.